So, welcome back to the cave. Um, today we're going to dismantle, put together and refit to the bike a pair of Makuni cabs um, from a 1976 Suzuki GT 250B. It's a bike I restored a couple of years ago. Um, never actually got round to finishing it so I came to commission it, it wasn't running well at all. The carbs were uh, not good, particularly the right hand carb, it was really flooding, it was a mess. Uh, there had been a monkey in there before, um, so I've got a kit, we're going to go repair kit, we'll pull it apart, we'll have a look, we'll rebuild it, we'll put it back on the bike, we'll balance the carbs um, and hopefully it'll be um, a little bit of information for everybody. Workshop essentials though, on working on any McCune carb, you need a workshop hat, preferably a leather Stetson and without doubt a massive cup of tea, a cup of tea of course because we're in Yorkshire, uh, none of this newfangled coffee and when I say tea it's proper tea, the milking, no rosemary, no strange additives, just a cup of tea. Okay let's see if we can this this bad boy back together. Caring has been cleaned, we've got all the bits there. Um, I have actually put it together once and taken it apart just to, uh, just to familiarise myself a bit. Also, before the full video sequence starts to put it together, I've put some still images on of um, an exploded diagram of, of the carb and also um, a parts listing. This has been from a genuine um, Suzuki uh, parts listing. So hopefully that'll be a help uh, to some people as well. And I'll try to refer to the terminology that they use um, uh, to describe it on, on, on those still images as well. Okay, let's go. I'll, I'll try to um, show you as best as I can uh, without my finger and hands getting in the way. But be warned, I've got some. Uh, I've got fingers like pig tits, and also forty odd years of riding. They're a little bit, um, <laughs> a little bit arthritic at some time. So I might not always be able to get my hands out of the way. But let, let's try and see what we can do. So what should we start with? Uh, what should we start with first? Okay, let's put the main jet, yeah? Let's go with the main jet first. So the main jet in there. Flat bladed screwdriver, so I can't use my jizz screwdriver. Shame I can't use the jizz. Which can't be the bit of jizz. No need to over tighten these. I've seen a lot of things wrecked by people. Um, just going and tightening and tightening and, and, and never stopping um, until they break something off. Let's then go with what should we put on next? Okay, pallet jet. It's a pallet jet. Again, you, you're not going to see it close up, but in there you've got a couple of um, holes that would be like a, a spray bar sort of fuel. So, that would drop in there. And then we'll tighten that down again. Don't go crazy with the tightening, just to feel it bottom. Bottom and jizz. Probably offended somebody by saying bottom and jizz, but really, I really, really don't care. So that was the um, check going in. Let's see what we're comfortable Let's start putting the float valve assembly in. Okay. Okay. Again as ever, just really just finger tight, there's no load on these. And then what then would go in is is, is the float valve. Um, as you can see these are this is spring loaded. And what would sit on that one, got it in place, is some, some people call it a flapper valve, but I, I tend to call it a float arm. Well, that will just pop in there for now. Okay. I'm pretty good to go on that one. Okay, so. Float arm and pin, or, or so, so some people do call it a flapper, flapper valve, or a flapper arm. Well, that would work okay. then. As you can see, there we've actually got a couple of holes in those stems. So we put the pin 
through there. Throw the arm pivot and out with the side. Now, if you remember that valve we just saw with the spring loaded valve, what that's actually doing is acting upon there on the front and it's keeping it in the up position. Now, look how positive and, and well, springy that is. That's um, been a word I can use for it. What was, and it's more so on the other cab, on the, on the right hand cab that was flooding, that spring was really worn out. I mean, it was, there was basically no resistance, no movement. So, hopefully, by putting the by putting the new valve in, um, or the new assembly in, that's going to stop the flooding air problem that I was having, or the bike was having. These are the floats themselves. Okay, and again, closing the title, they float up and down, or hopefully they should do. And they rest on the pins, or they move up and down on these pins in the float ball. They are marked up. So it tells us which way around these would go up and up. Okay, so to try and show in there, those arms that are attached to the floor, they, these obviously can move up and down now. So when it's back on the bike, uh, sorry, when it's back on the cab, those pins act against or with that. So that's telling the fuel to shut off. Are on so that if you think about things are upside down at the moment, that's why it maybe looks a little bit odd, but it's upside down at the moment. So, if we put this uh, gasket on, new gasket as you can see, make sure I've got the right way around, which I haven't, but I have now. So let's get that all back together. Good. Put these back. Good. Again, we'll go through because there are recommended um, settings. Let's say when we've got the carbs back on the bike, and we'll try to look into we'll set the balance. We'll look to set this um, screw up. We've then got and what reference to they? What are they called on this? One? The instrument for the pilot there. And where does that go? Again, spring loaded, I'll put a new spring on there. Again, that's to stop it moving around once it's in place. I want it adjusted, sorry. So we'll just lightly nip that down for now. As I say, that's going to be the one we'll, we'll, we will do the adjustment when it's back on the bike. And we're doing the free bag. Pretty good. It's not a competition. Right, now this is the, the, the choke assembly. This was a bit. Um, it wasn't really the assembly itself. I suppose was was working. It's only a simple, simple plunger that so goes up and down. But um, it, it didn't have a very positive, uh, didn't have a particularly positive feel about it. So I've lubed it up um, to get a spring on there. We need to have this clip, and as you can see, there's a a cut out there that sits on the sits on an indent moulded into the car. This one then gently knit these up. I mean these are brass fitting so obviously we need to be what we need to do then is fit this arm so I've, I've put a little bit of cock slip on there just to um, well, give it uh, where it rubs against each other it's designed to it's supposed to be a slack fit. So if we just then carefully Get that on there. Line that up there. I'm trying to fight me a bit. Okay. 
there. It's quite easy to get that one across straight out. We'll do that. It is of, of um, it's of the correct length and there's like a landing on, on the underneath and the, so it, it just sits against it. And that, yep. This now gives a very positive off on choke, whereas before it was kind of just flapping about. Um, when the choke's on, it's on. When it's off, it's clearly off and it, it's held off. So that's another advantage of, of, of rebuilding the cam. So, so last sequence, um, and this is really just to compare uh, both the carburetors. Obviously, this is the one we've been through, and this is one yet to be done. It was rare to show the um, difference um, in appearance um, of the two carbs once they've been, been finished. Again, aesthetics are not essential, but they, they, are, they are nice, of course. As I mentioned, this is the one that we put through the, um, <laughs> through the dishwasher. Always best done when wives are not about. They're not always totally as understanding as, as uh, Jolly Boys are. Also, as I mentioned, I then gently sprayed on a small amount and brushed off some uh, ACS 50, more as a preservative. And the other thing, of course, in the, in the dishwasher, what happens is, now, and I think it's a salt buildup, it reacts with the uh, aluminium in the body and you get those sort of white deposits. So brushing that on, brushed it off. I, I, I like the finish, it's a road going finish. I am not one for constantly cleaning and, and polishing bikes. Person who owns a GT after me might be, and, and, and that's fine. Um, it's a nice enough finish. It's not too different, I don't think, from how it would have come out of the shop in, in, in 1976. Um, it's interesting when you do see them both together and, and, and see the actual difference. Again, this is this only ever uh, intended as a road going um, finish. It, it was never meant to be sort of a concourse uh, sparkly finish. But it works and I like it. And it's cost effective and being a Yorkshireman will like things that are cost effective as well. So that's kind of it for now. Um, cars will now be built up, I'll obviously work on this one. We'll get them back on the bike um, and then we can go through how we would balance the carbs. On these there are no, uh, there are no um, vacuum takeoff points so we have to balance these uh, mechanically. So we'll go through how we would do that because that's always a bit of fun and I think people would find that Quite interesting as well. So thanks for watching it so far, and uh, well, bye for now from the Jolly Boys MCC.